The college football media day season is upon us as the Big 12 gets set to start theirs today in Las Vegas. And to me, if media days were a holiday on the calendar, it would have to be Thanksgiving. We get all filled up on information, prognostications, predictions, and projections, and then we get full and get to sleep on it until toe meets leather, which at least in the Crane household is called Christmas. But the peculiar thing about the Big 12 being the first power conference to have media days is that in my opinion, they're probably gonna be the most competitive conference out of any of the power four when it comes down to determining a winner. Now remember, I said most competitive, not the best, but it's looking like it's gonna be a hell of a ride for Brett Yormark. Now look at the teams that they have and the teams that have a legitimate chance to win the league and earn that playoff by, don't forget that. We have teams like Kansas State, Utah, Oklahoma State, Arizona, Texas Tech, Kansas, and even UCF with KJ Jefferson now. <laughs> then you have upstart West Virginia who turned it around and Neil Brown saved his job last year with Garrett Green. TCU, it's going to be interesting. That offensive line's a question mark. And then could a team from the bottom end up shocking the world, like in Colorado or Houston? Probably not this year. But when you compare the Big 12 to the ACC, the SEC, and the Big 10, I think it's more wide open at the top than any of those other conferences. So let's kick off the media day circuit with parity and depth, a drink that pairs with college football fandom and always goes down smooth. I'm bringing my co-host, former Michigan quarterback, David Cohn, my brother, former Western State Colorado wide receiver, Blaine Crane. David, again, I'm not saying the Big 12 is going to be the best conference, but if we're looking at, at the amount of teams that, and, and again, everybody's going to pick their own team, but the amount of teams that have a legitimate chance to win the conference, when I look around at the rest, I mean, I think there's better cases for more teams in the Big 12 than anywhere else. Yeah, and I mean, the 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 odds makers agree with you here in terms of the Big 12. Look, there's five teams right now listed with uh, better than plus 1,000 odds to win the conference. That's not the case for the SEC. You only have four. So those four are Georgia, Texas, Ole Miss, and Alabama. For the Big 10, that's the Buckeyes, Oregon, Penn State, and Michigan. After that, you get USC all the way down at plus 2,200. And the ACC is tied right now with Florida State, Clemson, Miami, Louisville and NC State, all with better than plus 1,000 odds to win the conference. But for the Big 12, Utah, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Central Florida, and Kansas. Now, even when you go all the way down to the bottom and you're talking about teams like you did, Houston, plus 11,000, yeah. not as bad as, say, a plus 40,000 with Stanford or plus 100,000 we saw with Vanderbilt to win the, the SEC. Even Houston for a second. I mean, Willie Fritz can flat out coach football, man. He can. Returning sure. a quarterback, he, too? He returning a quarterback? Southern. Like, that's the type of team, like, how can you project who they can play spoiler to this season? Yeah, and, and Blaine, you know, when I say SEC, and even looking away from the odds, just in your opinion, instinctually, I think we say, all right, who can le legitimately win the SEC? Georgia, yes. obviously. Alabama, yes. I would say, even though they're under Kevin First year, one. still talent. Texas mm -hmm. with Sark. And then I, I would say probably Ole, Ole Miss. Ole Miss, what they did in the transfer right? portal on defense. And LSU is the team in question. Well, Missouri right? to me. Missouri is, too. Uh, I think for Missouri sure. is better than LSU right I, I, I would right agree now. with that from the defensive side of the ball. But you do bring back Nuss if you're LSU. And there's no way. There's no way LSU's defense can be that bad. You got to think of what LSU did with that bad of defense. I mean, you win nine games and have a Heisman winner. So if you click up a little bit on that defense and Nuss plays somewhat like Jaden Daniels, or even half of that, I think LSU, with the athletes they have, can contend well, for, for the SEC. Well, you don't have as, as big of a sample size speaking about Garrett Nussmeyer for LSU, but you know the more tape I watch of Garrett Nussmeyer, you know who I see? Hmm. I see Quinn Ewers. You think I mean, so? go watch it. They're very, very similar. I think Nuss is more athletic than he is running-wise, though. Hmm. Um, but, but when you look at kind of the way they act in the pocket, the way that, and I, again, I know Garrett doesn't have nearly the sample size with Quinn, and there's some injury worry with Quinn, uh, but, but that's a similarity I, I don't think a lot of people have seen. But then if I pivot, you talk about the SEC, to the Big Ten, David, I, I think the amount of teams, honestly, that can win the Big Ten, I've got three, maybe, maybe, Ohio State, mm -hmm. Oregon. Yeah. I mean, Penn State, Drew Aller's got to prove it to me, man. I'd put, Michi I'd put Michigan, Michigan before I put Penn State. Well, I, I was going to have Mich Michigan four, but Michigan lost a ton. Not that they can't win it, but I think the Big Ten, you may have 
a lesser amount of parity at the top in the Big Ten than you do in the SEC. And then the ACC got to be the closest, the closest to the Big 12. And that's the kind of the argument you can make for maybe. I mean, how, how good – I mean, how good do you think Pitt will be this year? I've, and we're I've, not used to seeing a Pitt team win, what, three games? Well, I called it last, last year. You did call that. Kudos to your call. But that's not the Pitt team we're used to seeing. Pitt always has a couple guys on defense and one or two guys on offense. And they can compete. Georgia Tech. And a lot of people aren't giving Georgia. I think their win, total win's five and a half. I, would, I actually think that Georgia Tech may be more of a threat to win the ACC than NC State is. I mean, who last year, right? There's a couple quarterbacks we talked about that really turned it around and, and Haynes King was one of them at Georgia Tech. Now, we'll see. You know, we're going to know early with Georgia Tech. They play, what, Notre Dame week one, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, Florida State, excuse I believe. Me, Florida State week one. Twelve and a half. We're going to know early. But I look at NC State. I love Grayson McCall. I think Dave Doran's done some really good things at NC State, even though, you know, it's uh, the situation, you know, has, has kind of fallen off with Grayson McCall because of injuries. But right now, I would probably bet on Georgia Tech. Over NC State, in my opinion. But in terms of the Big 12, even take those top three out of it for a second. Like Utah's the favorite right now. We kind of mm -hmm. all agree on that. Even Oklahoma State, Kansas, Kansas State, State, like take those out. Look at Kansas right now. For I sure. mean, Jalen Daniels does for sure have to stay healthy, but with him, Lance Leopold as the coach, like they could 100% win that conference. Without no one would be surprised. At this point, I'm starting to think West Virginia could step up and win that conference. Nine games? I Look at what Gus Malzahn's going to return on offense for UCF. I mean, defensively, they give up so many points. Mm -hmm. It's hard to just be like, hey, Central Florida's going to win the conference. But what they're going to bring back on offense, and now you bring over K.J. Jefferson, they're going to be a problem. Even think about a team like Baylor for one second, right? Has David Miranda, we will agree, has underperformed since that year when they won the conference, won the, I believe won the Sugar Bowl, were a top five team, right? But they're going to return 20 starters. They got a chip on their shoulder. Like, Baylor's, Baylor could beat anyone. Well, any I, I mean, you talk about maybe the best odds to bet on of a team that's kind of down there to win the conference. You said Arizona was at plus 1,000. Guys, uh, let's, let's not forget, they returned. I, I know Jed Fish is gone. Right, Jed Fish has gone yeah. to Washington. Washington's going to the Big Ten. Uh, they brought in San Jose State's coach, which we'll see on that one. But you return Fafita mm -hmm. at quarterback. You return McMillan, yeah. who those two together are absolute dynamite. The offensive line, you do return a decent amount of guys, but you know the Morgan kid that, that was a big anchor. If you kind of look at what happened when he wasn't in there, I, th I think you know they gave up more sacks during those. Two games he didn't play than than they almost did the, the rest of the season. And Fafita, I think, is a guy not enough people are talking about. Um, I thought he was way more efficient th than I assumed he was going to be, and we know that back and forth uh, quarterback situation that they had. But then defensively, you know, they returned a, a, a decent amount from that unit as well. They brought over one of the most underrated linebackers in the country from San Jose State. So again, would anybody be shocked? You brought up Willie Fritz in Houston. Would it just be totally shocking if Houston made a run at it? No, but it would be super shocking if Mississippi State did. Yeah, no in the doubt. SEC, right? It'd be super shocking if Boston College did. I just feel like there's a team out there we're not talking about, guys. Who everybody's talking about? I'm not. I'm no, about they're gonna win it, fellas. No, I'm not. Talking it's his about second Colorado. year. It's prime. The oh, savior. Oh, oh, he it. walks on water. They're gonna win it. You saw. Hey, you saw. They're bringing back Sanders. I mean, you still have Travis. You got nobody up front on both sides of the ball. I will never understand. The people who just come up here and gas Colorado. Hell, even the new video game that's coming out got them like an 87 overall. I'll never understand it. I know it's prime. I know it's sun. Hey, buddy, cool watch. How about you go win some damn football games first? But Colorado fans should still embrace the excitement, though. I don't want Colorado I'm not talking fans about Colorado fans. First, no, well, you know? nobody, here's the thing. I've defended prime before. Nobody here hates Colorado. There's some people out there that do. Because they've gotten gassed up to the point, and then early last year, yeah. you know, they were the the hottest girl at the dance till the makeup fell off, and you really, you know, you haul past it and realize you thought an eight really was a four. But if you really understand the way football works, and I'm not saying Colorado won't be better up front this year than they were last year. Hell, it's going to be hard to be worse. But they're not nearly ready, not nearly ready. You can have Shadur and Travis and all these cool ornaments. On the tree, because that's what skill position players are. I would say the quarterback is the star on the Christmas tree. But if you don't have that base, and that's not just your starting five on the offensive line, you need at least seven, preferably eight. Then on the defensive line, you have to have depth so guys don't have to empty the tank all the time, and then you're nothing in the third and the fourth quarter. I just don't think Colorado's there yet. I think people that understand how football works get that. 
But people that don't just see Shadur, they see Travis Hunter, and they're like, man, it, how's, anybody, how's, how's anybody going to stop Colorado? But I'll tell you this right now. There's a man in the woods, all right, and that's North Dakota State. Yeah. And if you look at that spread right now, it's eight and a half, trees. buddy. Yeah. Eight and a half. All they, do is, all they do is run the football and tackle. I already can't wait for that one. Back to Arizona for a second. I mean, I think Noah Fafita is going to be one of the best football players in the country this year, even without head coach Jed Fish. And they have the same odds Arizona does at plus 1,000 to win the Big 12 as Iowa State does that's at a, plus 1,000. And Iowa State, again, that's another team that we haven't even talked about here. They always come in high expectations mm -hmm. in the offseason. They've underperformed the last couple of years, but... Six and three. They finished six and three in the conference a year ago. Well, it just and Blaine's got a great theory on this. What what has to happen for us? Yes, Iowa? who has to piss Matt Campbell off for y'all to start playing? Early. Yeah. Early. Let's and get out and way. to try and fight Matt Campbell. And they're bringing back a After ton of production this year. A oh, I love back, their, their young yeah, running back who averaged seven yards a carry. And a ton of production on both sides of the ball. I mean, that's we'll another see. one. I, I think Arizona plus one thousand is a great bet. What's up, everybody on the tube? Appreciate you guys taking some time to check us out. Watch us. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. It's really easy. It helps out a lot. Like the videos. Uh, and please turn that notification bell on so you know when we drop content, which is like basically every day.